Let's go and make something. G'day, welcome to the shop. I thought I'd do a bit of a shop tour. It's been a while since I did my last shop tour, two or three years. And I, at first I thought, no, nothing's changed. But then I actually thought about it. A fair bit has actually changed, and you've actually watched a lot of it being changed um, during the videos. My shop, as everyone knows, is a basement under a 116-year-old house or 110-year-old house. And we live on a hill, and we're on the lower side of the hill, so therefore the hill is in just in behind you. The camera is at the moment sitting on the table saw, and the door is right there. As you walk in the door, right to your uh, right to your left, left to your right, right on your left <laughs> is the the lathe. Now I don't do a lot of turning, so I am considering selling it, getting rid of it, donating it, um, and getting a model engineer's one to do my steampunk turning. Um, it's on the bench that we made when we moved into the place and that is held up. Underneath the bench is the shelves that I put in. Just holds all the, the two sleds on the bottom shelf and the my straightening jig. On top shelf it usually holds push sticks, kerf, inserts, different inserts that I've got, push sticks and a few other bits and pieces. Featherboard, the original miter gauge. That is worked out very well. I am glad that I've done that and I don't want to change it. It has worked out exactly the way I thought it was going to work out. So that is a win for me. Then back up, just in behind, I've got another, more pegboards. The, these tools I don't use a lot anymore, like the hacks or the, the, the cross cuts. I do every now and again, but not, not, a, not a lot because I can do it all on, the, on a power tool. And, we created power tools for a reason. Moving around, you can just see one of the house piles here that I've got to contend with. Now I've thought about taking some of these house piles out and putting big beams in, but that would lower the height that I've got to work with and I would keep knocking my snogging on it, which is not a good thing. Anyway, move, moving around from the lathe, the lathe is just here. And you can see my drill press station that I use. It's, I've got no major qualms against the, the drill press. The only qualm that I do have, it's very hard to wind up and down, so I basically don't. The cupboard below it, in theory now I need to take that cross off because there is no medical kit in there, is just holding junk. It's a, it's a storage spot where I have no idea where to put things. Now I'm just going to move the camera over a bit. You can still see the drill press there. Now there's a shelf just to the side with the, the grinder on top of it. So 90% of my drill bits are in the shelf. I have some others that are in proper nice cases and everything. But when I want a quick drill, something that's just there and it's handy to the drill press just to the side. And of course sitting on top of the shelf is my $6 grinder. Still going strong. Now... Just moving in behind this the, the the wall here, there's another house pile and I've put a wee partition in. This is one of the changes I've made, is the bandsaw is just here. So the bandsaw is now here, I just wheel it out, do my cutting and just push it back in. That is where the router table used to be. And I've just basically swapped the router table and the bandsaw. I've just swapped them around. As you can see, there's the router table just there. And the reason being is when the router is not in use or the bandsaw is not in use, I remove the fence and I put a bit of plywood which gives me another bench space to work on. Um, I just put plywood there just to protect the, the router top. Below the router is still, I still have my thickness of there. I am going to do a little change on that, I think. Continuing around, but you can still see in, beside, in behind the bandsaw is my dust extractor. I 
basically only use it on the bantle and the router at the moment. I do want to pipe in possibly the table saw and the um, drop saw. However, I have to work out ways of doing that in a limited space. And the shelf there is just with paints. I've got fillers and stains and glues on the top two. And below I've got more glues. And the bottom shelf is basically oil and that for the, the bike. Just in behind there you can start seeing the, the, the first wall that I put in after I moved into the place. Maybe after a year or two down here, moved into the place. Then it's got the, the French cleat, the tools hanging on it. You've seen some of those projects like the sanding disc holder, which has now got a different sander on top. <laughs> Again, you can actually now see the house pile. And there's another one possibly in shot right here. The other two main ones that I've wanted to get rid of, this house pile and this house pile. But to do it, to, to, I have to put in a huge I-beam and it would lower it down here and it's starting to get too close to my head. And I'll probably knock myself out on it. I'll have to freehand this. Uh, there's not enough room for my stand. The French cleat wall, which goes all the way around now. Grinder, multi-tool, and underneath it you've got my circular saw, AEG jigsaw, Craig, whatever it is, pocket hole joiner. This is called a joiner jig, pocket hole joiner. I don't use this one. I prefer the the Craig. In here is a trim router, a, the AEG battery, 18 volt trim router. And I've got more clamps. Well, not more. It's the first lot of clamps you've seen. Above it, I've got some corner clamps. Uh, -oh. uh small, small modeler's vise that I use every now and again. I just attach it to my bench. What do they call that? Uh, it's the Craig clamp, vice clamp or something. Because I moved my old bench, I no longer have a spot for that. Squares, tape, Allen keys, radio, drills, pin nailer, a radio, the 18 volt or 14 volt. It's still going, but it is on its last legs. AEG drill, impact driver, and AEG impact wrench. Just in behind there, some spanners. They're just sitting on the French cleat. Don't know why. <laughs> Tapes, measures, and stuff. That shelf is going to get sorted. I have calipers, compasses, and, and um, rain is not working. Oh yes, oh yes, hey, another caliper. Bread nails, more bread nails and staples. Basically, the top shelf is nearly empty and probably could be sorted and put more junk up there. That'd be good. That's awfully bright. So back down here we've got my tool my tool box. So I normally just wheel it out when I need something out of the top. Just wheel it round. Open it up to get my sockets. It's very rare that I use them that often, but I do use them enough to have a set. And I'll just wheel it back. Allen keys, quite a few of them, different sizes. Believe it or not, there is actually some imperial ones mixed in the mix that. A junk drawer, that's usually got a knife and a couple of scribes, hole punches. That actually goes with the router. Spare blades, deburr tool, spare parts, and jewelers, screwdrivers, and Oh, there's a router bit there. Why oh, is a router bit there? And then this drawer here, we've got adjustable crescents or crescents and vice grips, pliers, 
from needle nose cutting to, to a standard pair of pliers to monkey grips more spanners to ratchets a couple of ratchet spanners in there as well screwdrivers this drawer is the end or throw drawer so it's got my awl another knife flush cut saw um, wrecker's knife recommend getting one I use it as a chisel I use it as a knife I use it oh, this thing's been abused the bottom part is usually concrete stuff like maybe a trowel and some cold chisels and bits and pieces moving around this corner here is filled with odds and sods basically junk um, that's where the compressor used to be, but I've now moved the compressor to the other side end of the bench, which is m more practical. Above it, you've got another pegboard. These tools I use quite regularly. There's planes, scissors, there's um, my pruning saw, which I also use as a scraper when I'm using for doing plastic. And when I say scraper, a bit of plastic, I'll scrape the sharp edge off it. Square that I made, there's compasses, saws, bevels, files. Now the camera is sitting on the router table and that is basically the view you see in a lot of my videos. Continuing on we've got clamps, different types. You saw me make the, well, some of you might not have. My containers, I actually need to make another one of a container holder because I've now got four more and I'm probably going to buy another four. They are very nice and I do like them, but I do want to change, I do want to make a cabinet for them that actually goes down under where the shelf is, that plastic junk shelf, so that it holds all of them and I can buy a few more. That would also free up this bench behind me to do other stuff on. That's the plan. I don't think that's actually ever going to happen, but you just never know. This part of the wall, since my last shop tour, that's all new. Um, I did a video on that, and it's now well and truly earned its keep for storing stuff. So I've got my AccuCut tracks there, the rip guide, the rip cut guide, whatever you want to call it there. Uh, I've got more clamps, the Craig clamps, the straight edge, uh, T-square, a metre of T-square, metre ruler. And this section, uh, again, is all new. This is where the bandsaw used to be originally. It's now got my sander here, and I, I actually like having the sander here. Um, I've got some more holders here. I've just got various things I use for when I'm doing a bit of steampunk. Above it, again, just more more stuff and things and books and bobs on the sander you can actually see that I've actually also using every nook and cranny there's wood there just being stored it's up off the ground again this is all new the bob and sander I still have the idea of the extension on the bench um, so I can swap it out I have, just haven't had time to get around to it I do like this that's actually done quite a few Bit of work now more clamps and you'll see these my first aid kit because it's within reach of the main area area era computer era main area of the workshop and we'll just see that there's more wood stored down there so moving around from the bomb set bobbin sander is the cubby what i call my cubby corner um up there i store my scroll saw which i'll bring out and clamp to the bench my nail guns above it to the left of the nail guns there is my Ryobi biscuit joiner there's some chisels up the corner there the reason the chisels are up there is because I don't actually do a lot of chiseling but they are still within reach they used to be up by the lathe if I needed them I'd have to go wandering up to the lathe and get them whereas there I only have to take a couple of steps and oh, in the green bag is another trim router Underneath the bottom shelf is, yep, basically more paint trays and there's another router in there, 
don't know where to store. I'm possibly going to sell that one. I, I have enough routers. Another house pile. Uh, the sticker cabinet. People do ask what's actually in the cabinet. More steampunk junk stuff, basically. There's more steampunk junk. There's a couple of bits for the tools. This is like the miter gauge for the sander, which is useless. But still keep it. That's the foot for the um, scroll saw. So moving around again, you can see just in behind the drop saw there, there's more wood storage and it gets out of hand uh, my Bosch my Bosch drop saw here an absolute workhorse in the my workshop anyway purely because I don't have a lot of space so it becomes the only one that I can cut long material because I can't fit do a long material cuts on my table saw as you'll soon see however I can't do wide cuts on it so just below um, I have the tool shed jointer thicknesser again as you know I don't use it that often I've used it a couple of times it's handy to have it's one of those tools that will go on to the French cleat swap out system hopefully maybe I don't use, I've never used the thickness on it because I've always had the DeWalt, but I have used the, the jointer side of it. I've shot that, which is 99% of the time connected to the, the drop saw. That wood pile's gotten bigger. I was supposed to be getting rid of this and getting it smaller and doing something with it, but... So... There's more wood there. You can see both piles. Yes, you can. So, table saw. We're just moving around the table saw. Another workhorse in the in the workshop, but I'm limited because I've got a house pile here and I've got a house pile over there. So I'm limited in the width I can cut. I have an old chimney support at the back. So I'm limited with the length I can cut. However, 99% of the projects uh, I can get away with cutting whatever. Uh, it's not, not, it hasn't been a major issue. There's been one or two times I wish I could cut down a full, full sheet. But 9 times out of 10 I just take out the back and use the track saw or circuit saw to, to break it down. I have the, the Incra sled on it with the Incra miter gauge. I have the upgraded fence. You saw me put that on. You saw me break the fence in one of my videos. I have now got no major issues with this saw except, except, which I've said in one of my safety, safety videos is the riving knife, the way it gets attached to the back of the saw as well as under here. Bolt there that it gets connected to. I find that annoying the way it does it. The riving knife does not go up and down with the saw. It just stays there. So the only time I really put it on there is when I'm doing a long rip cut, which I can do. A, a, like I can rip down a length of four by two, maybe three meters, and it goes up the hill. But I'm also limited to how much infeed I can because I've got a wall right there. All right. I don't know what to say there. This is the real junk corner, rubbish corner. Um, there's a box here for Zaria's embroidery machine. There's more wood under there. I call this my ply and MDF corner because basically that's what's there. Ply, MDF, and a couple of garden tools and then just moving around is the door again. I do want to develop this area but that's a lot of work. It's a dirt floor under there. I'd have to, you know, that's a lot of stuff to just remove and get rid of. However, I do want to, because it's more wall space that I can use, I can, I would like to set up like a the CNC in that corner one day. So just outside the door of the basement, we've got another wee compartment down here. And it's just underneath the bathroom. 
This is where I store sheet goods. I can fit a whole sheet down in there. I'm going to try and build something to actually do a little bit of tidier job than, than what it is. And we have a rainwater garden. Uh, whoops. I'm stuck. And we have a rainwater garden tank. It just collects the rainwater and we use it for the garden. And it flushes itself out. We've got a first flush first flush system here but on top of it is more wood and you can see yeah, maybe I don't know a lot of room in this button in here and finally eventually I plan on putting an outdoor bench here somehow not 100% sure how I'm going to do that to keep it weatherproof but Once we've finished with all the renovations, get rid of the scaffolding. This section is just about all done anyway. Just That just needs its final coat of paint. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little tour, just to show that I've done a little bit to the place since the last tour, which I believe was in 2019, maybe 2018. I'm not sure, I can't remember. It was a while ago, but I have changed a few bits and pieces, so it was actually worth having another look about. My core followers have noticed the changes that I've done and seen it, the progress, so it's a long road, but we'll, we'll get there. Anyway, catch you next time. Kia kaha. Stay strong. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember to click the notification bell icon, that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. You can find us on most social media, including Google+, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram. Please also consider supporting me on Patreon. See you next time. Don't forget to go and make something.